Hello all, welcome to my second Falcon BMS tutorial. Apologies for the long delay between videos, I've been just busy with schoolwork. So this tutorial, as the title says, is covering the data cartridge and configuring and also advanced functions. So to access your data cartridge, you click this button over here which is over the weather icon. So first page that you'll have up is targets. So targets allows you to set precision sear points which will go directly over target. So the way that you set that is you recon a installation or ground units. So you can recon a SAM site or a bridge. So for in this case we'll recon a bridge. So pulls up you can expand which shows individual parts of it so for a SAM site this will show the individual units you'll have this designated target sear point which will be the number that shows up then you have to make sure this is on sear point otherwise it won't show up so typically I recommend target starting your target sear points at 15 because I'll make sure that it doesn't interfere with your flight plan so the way that you set a precision sear point or target sear point, you just highlight what you want to designate as your target. So it's in this bridge span right here, except, and you can go to 16, select bridge span, except, and so on and so forth. So then you can X out the recon. Then if you go to your targets page and go up, you can see that it's pulled up. So this can be easy use for designating points for JDAMs or even dropping the dumb bomb CCRP. The next page is for countermeasure system. So in this right here you have this drop down which you can choose either your chaff program or flare program. So this is assigned to each individual program which is 1 through 6. 1 through 4 you can select in the pit and this is activated by CMS forward then uh, f your program 5 is slap switch and then 6 is CMS left so for chaff program it controls the uh, amount of chaff which is good for confusing radar guide missiles and then flare is for confusing infrared missiles Enable feedback will have a Betty saying chaff flare whenever you press the button. Then bingo will let you know when you are low on chaff or flares and you can individually set on how many quantities which different F-16 variants carry different amount of chaff and flares. So the default block 40 that you'll typically fly if you do the Surge 6 squadron and the normal Korean theater has 60 chaff and 30 flares. So for starting off, I typically rec what I do personally is on program one, I have it set to it's for program one to send off one chaff and no flares, and then for flares, I just have program six. As for the other programs. I have not gone into much depth in saying what I want to do for that, but that boils down to personal preference on what you want to do. For the slap switch, that is crucial to have in your controls, because if you hit that, that's an essentially a panic button if you're being attacked by an unknown threat, and you can set it to burst off a lot of chaff and flares in a short interval or you can configure it for low level strikes on the airfield. Then the REQCTR will also is similar to the feedback except for it gives you feedback when you turn on and off your jammer which you turn on your jammer by doing CMS aft and turn it off by doing CMS left. So again this boils down to personal preference which I would suggest doing that as you get more and more experience. So brief overview on how to create your own program is burst interval is how many uh, you know 
how many seconds in between each in the individual burst and then burst quantity is how much in that burst then uh, sequence interval is intervals between bursts so for me doing the only one flare I have it just any time you want and then one burst and one sequence and then that will just drop one flare and it's a similar story for chaff so eventually I'm going to get to changing these so next thing to do modes so with modes you can change on how your MFDs are set up it really varies on personal preference on how you want to set these up but you have diff all the main modes dogfight mode, missile medium range missile mode, navigation mode, air to air mode, air to ground mode so it all boils down to personal preference so MFD is your MFD on your right side MFD 2 is on your left side and then 3 and 4 are currently unused by the game but they can be used for more advanced aircraft if the BMS developers ever do an aircraft with more than two MFDs. So your primary F MFD is going to be the one on the furthest right and then the tertiary MFD is going to be the fur no wrong way around primary MFD is going to be the furthest one on the left and then the tertiary MFD is going to be the furthest one on the right so you can just set what you want for the drop down MFD off will have will turn off the MFD TFR terrain following radar FLIR that's forward looking infrared test it's a test page where you can see failures DTE that's where you can load in your data cartridge flight control system FLCS that's where you can uh, t make sure your fly-by-wire system is working WPN that's your weapon page for use like Mavericks and harms without using uh, the HAD TGP targeting pod Preavis HSD is your navigation page FCR is your fire control radar so the various modes of the radar on that SMS sys stores management system so that's where you can manage all the onboard weapons radar warning receiver heads up display and harm acquisition display so that's when you have the H if I remember correctly the HTS pod so current is where it starts off so once you spawn in the jet that's where it will display so if I were and I spawn in in nav mode we'll start off by showing my FCR along with my uh, HSD and then display bullseye will show the bullseye on the map so I'll be going into later about that in a further tutorial I will not be covering that in this current tutorial comms you can set your various comms so typically standard procedure is to set tower uniform 15 as your tower so the way that you do it just go up to 15 then just hit set tower and then it will automatically change for you sometimes carriers are glitched in setting up tower so you just need to look up a list I will try to find a list and post it down in the description below so uniform is used for cross flight communication then victor is for inner flight communication and you rarely want to change these from the default settings so the way that one key thing to remember is if you hit default that's where you will start off once you spawn in the jet so if your flight was on VHF 1 you would just hit default and then when you spawn in the jet once you get into 3D you'll be on uh, Victor 1 and then you can uh, print this if you need a list and you can also add a short description of the flight so if I 
want to say my flight, for example. Then you can print this out. I'll have this on a sheet of paper if you wanted to. And then key thing to remember after you're done, make sure you save it. Otherwise, if you have a crash in BMS and launch BMS up again, this will not necessarily be the same. So to pull it up again, you just hit load. Do not hit reset because that will ruin, take out everything except for the default radio bands. So it will set all your MFDs to off. So Next thing that I'm going to cover briefly is pre-planned threat points. So these icons with a dome on them, those are anti-aircraft location so if we right click then hit status we can see that this is an SA2 site so if we right click on the map you can set pre-planned steer point then move it close to it right click again hit status and then we can select what kind of thread is from this drop down menu so this is SA2 hit accept then exit out and then you can see this threat ring. This threat ring will show up on your HSD so you can keep in mind where enemy SAM threats are. Another helpful feature for your data cartridge is saying steer point lines. So you can have four different lines with five points each. So you can see this right here is just a dot but if you do additional steer points by right clicking and hit additional steer points to line, you can actually make lines. So these are useful for marking areas where you don't want to go into or reference for navigation purposes like the flot which is a forward line of troops so you can mark the border between where the North Koreans are and where friendly forces are. So just mark right there and then you know anything north of that will most likely be enemy and anything south of that will be enemy. Another useful thing that I often use it for is setting up kill boxes. So if I had if there were a bunch of tank battalions right here I can go create a new steer point line. then I can simply make a box around what all is safe to freely fire on and not be worried about hand friendlies. So that will cover my data cartridge tutorial. If you have any questions please comment below and if you have any future requests for tutorials please let me know. I have quite a few planned but as I am busy with real life I cannot get to them as fast as I would like to. So, cheers.